Hey everybody, it is Thomas and Brian back again for a live Q&A, a live aquatics Q&A with everybody's favorite aquatics enthusiast and video host, this guy. Hey, what's going on? We have Thomas here, we got yep. Brian here. Uh, he's here to answer your questions, I'm here for moral support. We're going to have a fun time as we usually do. Uh, a few things right off the top for those of you who haven't joined us on a live Q&A before. Just so you know, we do answer questions sequentially, first come, first serve. So get your questions in the chat right now if you want us to get to them uh, before the end of the stream. If you super chat us, uh, we do really appreciate that support and we will bump your question right up to the top. So feel free to do that. Uh, anything regarding like very specific questions about your fish, if it's going through a really tough time, uh, give as much context as you can and Thomas will do his best, uh, but it is always hard to give you know those very in-depth answers about your specific animal and what, what might be happening. So as much context as you can, and if not, we'll link you to uh, some more support. What else? Um, 100K, 100K giveaway. Yes. So last Saturday, we uh, we had our big two-hour gala, our extravaganza. Tons of fun. Tons of fun. We gave away so much stuff. Uh, so thank you to everyone who showed up for that last week. Um, now, we did mention we were going to be notifying uh, the winners this past week, uh, but we have run into a bit of a roadblock just in uh, uh, working some things out with the vendors in terms of how to, like, where the things are shipping from. But worry not. If you won something, which a lot of you did, if you won something, you will be hearing from us. Don't worry. We will personally guarantee that you guys get that every single thing you guys won will make sure it gets out the door into you in a timely manner so bear with us they're just dotting eyes and crossing t's at head office they just want to make sure it's all gonna be you know with a pretty pretty pink bow they mm -hmm. don't want to contact you and then you have to wait a whole bunch so don't get anxious it's coming yeah um one thing brian uh, forgot to mention during the whole spiel about how this works is um questions regarding what fish go in what tank for the most part, I'm going to deflect to the same answer that I always give, and that is uh, go to a fish store and look at the fish that are there and see what fish interest you the most, and then uh, grab like a staff member that's at that store perhaps and have them walk you around and let you know what's appropriate for your sized aquarium. It is so subjective. I think it's one of the most fun parts of the hobby, deciding what animals you're going to keep. So asking me what I would suggest, number one, the lists are so long that it's impossible for me to give you all of the you know, potential suggestions and, and be who cares what I like. It's what, it's what you like and what inspires you. So, you know, but if you have like a specific situation, you have certain fish already and you want to add something else that, you know, is a schooling fish or this, that, and the other, you have a more specific version of that question. I'm happy to answer it for you. Yes. Uh, so very important. And also one other thing I forgot to mention. Oh my, my gosh, we keep forgetting. I should have made a, a <laughs> list and I didn't. Uh, for those of you uh, internationally, worldwide, who won the uh, the 15 minute phone calls with uh, this guy over here, hey, uh, we'll actually be um, uh, contacting you personally. So I'm going to be sending out emails uh, this weekend to start scheduling because um, I'm hoping we could uh, uh, start maybe schedule those for after a live stream or something. We could maybe do a few calls or whatever sure. works for everyone. We'll make it work. So yeah. I'm actually going to be reaching out to all of you international uh, phone call winners. So think about your availability and what time you're available yeah. and. Uh, Make sure you let us know what your um, time zone is yeah. so we can line that up and uh, we'll make it happen. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be f uh, fun. We'll reach out to you so you I guys can like we're have some those. really weird ones. Oh, it's like where we're going to be like live streaming at like 6 a.m. or like 12 p.m. <laughs> yes. Or 12 a.m. That's the one I meant. Yeah. It's Just to great. make it line up. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be We'll awesome. do it too. We'll make it work somehow. I'll be another. in my jammas. <laughs> oh, it's little jammies, little fishies on it. Do you have little fishy jammies? I have uh, fit Joe Boxer like fishies that are frozen, uh, like um, Long John's. Right. Nice. All right. Done deal. If it's if it's a bedtime, I'll just wear I'll just wear my monster onesie, which I also have. Sweet, because it's good for playtime with the kids. You guys won more than you thought. That's a, that <laughs> is a bargain. That's amazing. I'm, I'm I'll go the extra mile. Yeah. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for joining us here today. We really do appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that like button because it really helps us. Uh, we really want to make these things a big old party. So uh, if you can hit that like button, that's good. And while we're at it, why not tell us where you are? Where where are you watching from in the world? We'd love to know. Uh, we are in Nova Scotia, <laughs> and we'd love to know where you guys are. So let us know where you are and we will um we'll we'll shout it out all right so let's start with our first question you want to jump let's in? do it all right so first question i was struggling with a black algae issue and found a video with a method called the blackout method sure you don't turn your aquarium lights on for three days and you don't feed your fish as well 
This worked really well and the algae has gone since. I was hoping you could look it up and make a video on it because you don't have to use chemicals and it does work to help people with the same issue. What's your thoughts on the blackout method? It can work. It can work well. Um, blackout method actually works on a few types of algae pretty well. Blackbeard algae is one of them. Uh, I think another one that actually works pretty well, uh, well on is hair algae. Now, I will say I have used it a couple of times in the past, but I don't use it often, um, mostly because a lot of the tanks that I keep these days are, or have been keeping since before I moved, are reef aquariums. And I don't like um, starving corals of light for that long, I guess is the best way to say it. So I found other methods, uh, usually manual removal in conjunction with a good cleanup crew has worked really well for me uh, in general. Uh, GFO, stuff like that has also helped. But for freshwater aquariums and planted aquariums, the blackout method can be really, really good. So thank you so much for sharing that. That's yep. awesome. And maybe I will actually do the blackout method, maybe on the low tech tank even. And uh, yeah. I'll let it get full of algae again. I don't want to do it. But maybe <laughs> I will let it get full of algae again and do the blackout method, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Why not just you know put it through the... the I, I, I actually test. have a tank that I've purposely cultured green water in. We talked about that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks... It literally looks like like pea soup. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh but I'll try the blackout method on that uh, tank too. And if it works really well, because I've never tried it on, on green water, but if it ends up working really, really well, um, then I'll let it get all green again. And then we'll do the same thing over. Sounds good. On video, of course. Of course. That is our job. Thank you for that. All. That's a great suggestion. I yeah, like yeah, yeah. So where we got some people from? We got South Carolina in the house. We got New Brunswick here. Uh, let's see. Uh, j someone, j Wook1138, just moved to Nova Scotia from Toronto last week. Welcome! Guess where we came from? Join the club. Yeah, we should start a club. Yeah, Ontario and Toronto right. are just bleeding people out yeah, to uh, really. out east. Actually, Seriously. Yeah, and I'm not even in like a, a close to the city place. I, I'm rural Nova Scotia, off the beaten path. And there are people that have moved from uh, Toronto to my area since yeah. I've moved a year and a half ago. So it's kind of funny that this keeps happening. Yeah. I keep asking myself why. And I think it's the housing market in Toronto is absolutely crazy, it's number one. nuts, yeah, I yeah. think people are getting like, uh, more and more want to get down to earth and closer to nature and start, you know, homesteading and farming and sure. raising chickens. Anyways. Uh, how are the chickens doing? All, all they're, doing? they're doing okay, yeah. I, I hatched like, I don't know, 60 or so this season, this hatching season. I've sold most of them already. Nice. Yeah, Congrats, man. I'm not making like, I'm not, not making, when you factor yeah, in food bank. and stuff, I'm really not making any money, but it's just so much <laughs> it's a, fun. It's a fun hobby. Yeah, I enjoy it. Uh, I've learned so much from Al's videos. Uh, so massive thanks from the UK. Thank awesome. Yeah. It's Goth our pleasure. Gothenburg, Sweden. So glad. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, Wisconsin, Alberta, Scotland, Minnesota. Man, India, India Florida. Florida. Philippines, I Illinois, uh, India, Texas. Wow, awesome guys. All over the Man, it's so cool how far two a.m. reaches. Two a.m. But here watching from Australia. Yes, good, good for you in your fish jammies. I hope. Yeah, fish, awesome. fish jammies for sure. Yeah, awesome, cool, cool. Well, uh, let's get to more questions. Welcome, guys. Thanks for watching. Jamaica. All over. I saw Jamaica there Jamaica? too. Jamaica. No That's way. That's awesome. Ne Netherlands. Yeah. Okay, I want to cool. come to Australia. I really, really, really want to take a trip to Australia. Yeah. And Indonesia, actually. All right, let's get into some questions. Uh, what's your favorite size tank and what would you stock it with? Oh man, okay. That's a that's a really cool question. Um, here's the thing. I, I've had lots of tanks. I've had very, very large tanks, as we all know, and I've had very, 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 very small tanks, two and a half gallons. I've, in my infancy of aquarium keeping, I actually had fish bowls for a short period of time for a couple of betas and I nixed that pretty quick. But my favorite, I think to this day, standard sized aquarium, is probably a 40 breeder. Um, yeah. I really like the format. I like that uh, it's a relatively uh, wide rectangular shape, but also has a lot of depth front to back. It gives a, a really good kind of um, just overall platform for aquascaping cr and creating depth and dimension in your uh, hardscapes and aquascapes. Um, I've done a few reef tanks. Uh, in the 40 breeder format, and I absolutely love them. They were still, still to this day, some of my favorite tanks that I've worked with. Uh, and if I was going to do another 40 breeder now, I would probably. Oh man, this is tough. I I want to say reef, but now that we're doing that Pokemon reef build, right. I, I don't think I I want another reef. I think I'm going to have to just <laughs> pour fair. everything into this system. 
By the way, the more I find out about that tank, the crazier this is. I am falling down a creative rabbit hole that is hard to even describe. The more I talk with uh, Kyle, uh, talk with Kyle of Adaptive Reef about this build, the the weirder and crazier it gets, and I can't wait to show you what's what's gonna happen. It's, if it all goes down the way it's looking, it's gonna go down. It's gonna be earth shattering. So. Um, yeah, I'm, but, I'm actually I'm actually linking that in the chat. If you haven't seen the video yeah, yeah. yet, where Thomas kind of talks about it and illustrates his vision for it, yeah, um, it's check it out. It's gonna be weird. Um, but uh, I would probably do a planet tank. I I really have had this great idea of doing a nice river's edge style tank, um, where uh, the scape kind of slopes a little bit from one side to the other, so it's kind of a cross section of the river. And I want to have uh, like lotus bulbs on the low half of the tank where it looks like it's at the deeper part of the river and maybe uh, a few sparse uh, like valves or something. I just want it to look airy and open, but have some cover at the top and uh, also all these kind of like um, stems and stuff for the fish to swim through and then have it rockier near the other side of the tank with maybe some Anubias, uh, Bucephalandra, stuff like that growing tight against the rocks and just have a bunch of really cute small schooling fish. Uh, I would honestly probably do black neons. I really like black neons. I enjoy them. Um, yeah, and maybe like a pair of rams or something. Something simple and elegant and very specific. That's okay. That's my answer. So <laughs> a little window into your mind. Yeah. Uh, my skimmer is kind of up against the wall and only sticks out about one a uh, half an inch. Is that going to be a problem? What? Is it a hang on? Skimmer is against the wall and only sticks out about half an inch. I don't know. I don't understand fully your question. Yeah, you know what? Clarify a little more uh, in the chat, and we'll uh, we'll get right to it. Like, so. is this a surface skimmer, protein skimmer? Is it in the tank, outside of the tank? I don't really know. I'd love to answer it for you. So yeah, Brian will find it. I will. Yeah, put it more in the chat, and we'll get when to you it. Put it in the chat. Uh, any tips for a saltwater tank? <laughs> That's a big question. Yeah, I actually um, got invited by another YouTuber um, and had a, a very interesting. Uh, question asked which was roughly the same thing like if I could give one tip like secret tip to reefers what would it be so I'm gonna kind of bounce off of that um, and that is that I would recommend that anybody who's getting into reefing really focus on um, the stability in the aquarium uh, and and really focus on being uh, proactive with your tank. And what I mean by being proactive is uh, don't wait for problems to arise uh, to the point where they're actually showing symptoms. So like algae is a symptom of a problem that has come up or your water level being really low because you haven't topped the tank off or topped up your reservoir for your ATO. That water being low is a symptom of an issue. The issue is being that you haven't topped up your tank or your ATO reservoir or the tank. Don't wait for those things to happen to, to actually take action. And the reason you don't wanna wait is because the stability of the reef is so important. The stability in a saltwater tank is so incredibly important to those creatures and they will thrive um, with stability and consistency. Even if the levels aren't like perfect, chasing levels is also an issue that people fall into. But if your calcium is somewhere between 380 and 450 and stays at whatever that level is, let's say the level's 410. If your alkalinity is somewhere between seven and 11, let's say that number's 8.3. If it stays at 8.3 and doesn't go up and down often, if your temperature stays at 79, right? If those things remain constant, um, your corals will be able to thrive even if those levels, like I said, aren't completely optimal. If, if optimal to you is 450 for calcium, 1300 for magnesium, uh, alkalinity of 9.0, and that's where like everybody thinks the corals are gonna do best. If you keep bouncing those levels around, the corals will fail. They will have a very hard time thriving because they need that consistency. So the consistency is really important. And dosing on time, not waiting for your calcium to drop, testing on time, not giving it a couple extra weeks because you think it's probably okay. Doing those things uh, is going to lead to success. You don't need the most expensive light. You don't need the most expensive skimmer. You don't need the most expensive pumps. You can still get like middle of the road stuff as long as it's not gonna break prematurely, that would be a problem. But as long as you get middle of the road stuff that's gonna last decently and do an okay job, um, 
you know, lighting the tank and providing flow and all that. You don't need the most elaborate thing. That consistency and proactiveness is what's gonna get you the results you're looking for. So it's not all about money, because I know a lot of forums and stuff make it sound like you buy the best light, your corals are gonna do well. It might help, it might help, but it's it's your proactivity with your aquarium and keeping those levels consistent and stable that's gonna win you that uh, tank of your dreams. Cool. And that has been a PSA by Thomas. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little long. That was good though. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat just like spamming chat with their question. Uh, like I mentioned, we're gonna get to it in sequence. So once your, your question's in the chat, we're just gonna go in order and get to it. So I'll now that it's there, we'll get to it. So yeah, and I'll say if you spam the chat, we'll either purposefully ignore it <laughs> or we'll just boot you. We don't don't wanna, spam. We don't want to do that. Don't so, spam because yeah. like everybody's here trying to get their question answered. We do go sequentially. So if you've said it, saying it eight more times, all it's going to do is make it harder for other people to uh, see what's happening in the chat. And there are a lot of people trying to help each other in the chat as well. So be mindful of that. Spamming's no fun. Yeah. And if you if you really, really need an answer and you know, your favorite super chat. super chat if you really need to. But yeah. we'll get you like this early on. We should be able to get to it. So yeah. yeah. Uh, that said, uh, okay. Uh, Hayden's Aquatics. They're following up with their skimmer question. Oh, okay. Perfect. It's a protein skimmer internal and the water intake is only about a half inch away from the wall. And I'm wondering if that will affect water intake. It's an RSK 600 Red Sea skimmer and Bash Sea Blue SC. I don't think it will, as long as you're not creating a, like a choke point where you're gonna end up getting unwanted cavitation in the impeller, it should be fine. I've had skimmers basically touching the side panel and only had like half an inch of space for the intake. You have to consider it, it's the half inch, but it's not just half inch in a little square, it's the half inch all the way around, right? So it's a lot more than a half inch. And as long as uh, the pump's not being choked, which there's no reason it should, and if it were, you'd probably be getting cavitation or uh, extra vibration, you'd be able to tell, um, you're probably perfectly fine. Cool. Look at that skimmer, <laughs> Red Sea skimmer. Look at that. Yeah, no, you're probably good. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Awesome. Um, what next? What next? Uh, another question here. Uh, best for a 120 liter tank, uh, which is about 31 gallons, I think it said. Um, H, uh, hang on the back or canister? Eheim or Seachem uh, Tyndall? Tidal. Tidal. Yes. Okay. Hug, yeah, hug from Portugal. Yay! Hugs from Nova Scotia to Portugal. Um, 31 gallons, you could literally go either way. It's gonna come down to preference. Uh, I think you've picked two really good options. So anybody who knows me is gonna know that I'm gonna tell you that I would put an Eheim 2213, maybe even a 2215 on that tank, depending on what you're stocking it with. Um, that's just my preference. I like canisters. I like having it outside of the tank. I like just having those uh, two intakes and I like the spray bar there and that's it. Um, and just the sheer volume of media in a canister is usually a lot more than what you're gonna fit in a hang-on. However, the Seachem title is a very feature-rich hang-on. It's got surface extraction, which is great. It's self-priming, which is great. Uh, I think it has an indicator to let you know when the flow is being impeded, which is also great. The other thing I really like about it is it has a large media basket for a hang-on and it can be used a lot more like a canister than traditional sliding cartridge hang on filters. So if you are going to pick a hang on, that is definitely one of the better ones. So I will say it really comes down to what you prefer. One of the reasons I like canisters is that because you just have those tubes on the back, you can get the uh, tank closer to the wall, right? So with the hang on, the title is a relatively thick filter. It's gotta be, uh, you know, either hang off the size, side of the tank, which can impede uh, any kind of lid you wanna put on it, or if it's going behind the tank, the tank's gotta be further off the wall. So that's another consideration. Um, but yeah, no, you pick two really, really good filters. The only other hang on I would really suggest at this point is maybe the AquaClear. Uh, they're also a pretty good hang on, although much simpler and less uh, feature driven than the Seachem Tidal. I really like the surface extraction on the Seachem Tidal. It's really smart to incorporate that and self priming. Okay, like, <laughs> it's really. Did you hear that? Uh, okay, so next question, and this is one we said we weren't going to necessarily off uh, answer, but I think maybe you can give like maybe like maybe three examples of simple fish. Yes. So I have a 29 gallon tank, and I'm just a beginner to the saltwater hobby. What fish should I start off with? See, that's a, that's actually a really good one. Um, so 29 gallons isn't a ton of space, but it's enough for a lot of nano species of fish, and believe it or not, one of the easiest fish you can start with. 
absolutely easiest is probably also the most popular, and that is clownfish. Uh, Ocellaris clowns, Percula clowns, skunk clowns, whether it's pink or orange skunk clownfish, all really, really good options for a small aquarium. 20 gallons would be the minimum. Um, 29 gallons is a really comfortable uh, size for a pair of Ocellaris, uh, Perculas, or skunk clowns. Again, doesn't matter if it's pink or orange, they're both great. Um, the reason I'm mentioning the skunks is because not everybody wants to have the same thing that everybody else has. And I think skunk clownfish are underappreciated. I've kept both types, uh, pinks and oranges. I love them both. Um, they're just as easy, just as personable, just as cool as uh, all the myriad of different uh, percula or ocellaris clownfish morphs that are out there. But they're very easy and really, really good fish to start with. Another really easy fish, but keep in mind if you put one of these in the tank, you're probably not going to be able to put any other wrasses um, after that, <laughs> is a four line wrasse or a six line wrasse or a pink streak wrasse. They're all really, really good. They just tend to be a little bit more on the aggressive side. However, they're great at um, picking off, uh, you know, small unwanted pests and critters. Um, some people have reported luck with them eating things like uh, flatworms and unwanted bristle worms and um, Montipora flatworms or red bugs or blah, 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 all kinds of stuff. So they can be really, really good as a utility as well. So I uh, highly recommend them. Again, they're very, very easy. Um, something slightly more delicate, uh, but again, still really, really easy. You just have to be careful with what corals you're mixing it with are coral gobies. There are various types. Uh, citron gobies is one, uh, one type. My favorite is uh, the green and red banded coral goby. Uh, they, I'm sure they have another common name too. I don't know their Latin name off the top of my head. They're really funny looking. They got a really round, blunt face, but they're cute, dumpy, they're green and they got red stripes. Like, what do you, what do you want? <laughs> but they're a lot of fun. They kind of hop in and out of the corals. Um, they're really, really fun to just watch. They inhabit a different part of the aquarium than most of the other fish will. So that's one reason I really, really like them. Yeah, there's a there's a few for you to take a look at. But there are tons and tons of nano fish. So. Cool. Uh, next up. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. How old, How is, old is Thomas? Thomas? How old are you? What a question. I am the, no, no older than 48, surely. I, I'm older than Brian. Mm-hmm. I'll say Barely. That. Yeah, that's true. It, it is barely. I, I'm 33, but I'll be in less than a year. I'll be 35. 34. Yeah, that was... Mm. This is, this is what happens. It feels like 35. Every time I find a white hair, I'm like, I'm dying. That's it. I'm <laughs> I dying. I kind of like it. I'm like, ooh, I'm getting more distinguished. Uh, yeah. Dis right. Well, that's, that's fair. That's one yeah. way to look at it. That's just, why I, look at I, it. I just see death. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, no, 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 no. In all honesty, I'm, yeah, I'm 33. Uh, having a lot of fun. Yep. I don't feel too broken. Having kids makes you feel broken. Yeah. Like, you know, you have kids and your back just starts hurting. Every, oh, everything right? hurts. <laughs> like you, by 8 a.m., you're exhausted. You're just like, yeah. I just want to go go to sleep. It's and the you, lack you, of you sleep. Your whole day yeah, yeah, lack of sleep and playing with them all the time. Like, yeah, it's worth it. Totally worth it. Ah, <laughs> oh, great personal question. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Hi, Brian. Hi. That was that one's for me. That was yeah. weird. Uh, let's let's see here. Uh, hi guys, I'm new to the hobby. Welcome. Uh, new to the hobby and I think I would like to buy an air pump. I have a 37 gallon tank. Recommendations? It's in my bedroom so quiet is a must. That's a good question. Air pump. Oh, do you want, do you want my most honest answer ever? Don't get an air pump. <laughs> if you want it to be quiet, <laughs> don't get an air pump. They hum. They are going to hum. They're always going to hum. Uh, you can do things to mitigate it like... Um, put the air pump on top of something soft like a towel uh, or a piece of foam and that'll help mi minimize the amount of vibration carried from the pump to the stand that could cause a uh, louder humming like in the doors and stuff. But at the end of the day, don't get an air pump. <laughs> if quiet is important to you, just don't bother. There, there are other ways to add oxygenation to the water. Um, small pumps like, the, uh, like a Coralia Nano or the Akamai KPS um they can add a lot of circulation to the water uh ripple the surface and be silent while doing it so if quiet is important air pumps are not your thing that being said i find a lot of them are very very similar the whisper series has been pretty good 
I'm gonna be honest, I haven't looked at air pumps in probably a year and a half, so I don't even know what's available right now. <laughs> That's a weird thing to admit, but yeah. it just, I just, because I don't use them, um, I think the last time I actually had my hands on an air pump was when we did the how to clean up your airline tubing uh, video. It was a long time ago. Yeah, and other than that, was just battery-operated air pumps that I've used in uh, you know a pinch because mm -hmm. the power has gone out or because I'm transporting fish, and those are not quite at all. Um, just because they're built very cheap, the housing is small, there's no mitigation for that vibration. It is meant to just put air temporarily where you need it. So, yeah, there's my answer for you. Sorry I don't have something uh, more direct and I guess useful for somebody who wants air in the tank in, in a very quiet room but that all I can give you is tips to keep it quiet and tell you not to get one if quiet is really what you want cool. uh, people are saying you don't look 33 I uh, don't look 33? no they say you look uh, someone says something uh, you look like 20 maybe 29 that's awesome uh, pe yeah, people don't think and then uh, uh, someone actually suggested that they make a, a t-shirt that says uh, having kids makes you feel broken and just a big picture of your face on a t-shirt <laughs> great idea if someone, yes. someone photoshop that and send it to us send it to Brian. I, I'll put it on a shirt if yeah, somebody well, makes it yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here's my email at bigals.com if you can photoshop th uh, that shirt We'll make it. Well, we'll make it happen. All right, cool. Uh, and thank you. That's super, super flattering. I will say, like, when I go to the, the liquor store, I still get carded. Yeah? Usually by older women. And by older women, I mean women who are probably uh, 50 plus. Okay. If they're sub 50, I'm pretty sure they can tell that I'm broken. <laughs> um, or by the bags under my eyes that I must already have kids <laughs> even or something. The, even if you're underage, we're going to give you this because you, yeah, you, you look just like, look you, like you need it. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Take it. Um, but no, I'm always flattered when I get carded. I'm like, really? I still look that, that young? Because uh, in Canada, uh, they card you. I don't know what it's like everywhere. But in Canada, you, they are forced to ask you for ID if they think you look younger than 25. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, he could be 29, so I'm going to card him. They're saying I look sub-25. <laughs> Ridiculous. I bet if you shave the beard and cut the hair, it might even... Uh... No, I am so gaunt now from like <laughs> improper nutrition <laughs> and <laughs> lack of sleep. They're going to call an ambulance? Exactly. <laughs> I'll walk in, they'll be like, he's dying. <laughs> Get that man something. Someone says Thomas looks 19. All right. All right now. I don't butter him up. 19... 21 maybe. now i just now you're just saying i look inexperienced <laughs> <laughs> you looks indistinguished inexperienced and quite frankly i don't trust him <laughs> all right next aquatics question. questions let's do this is a five gallon tank good for a beta yeah uh just uh get a nice small appropriate filter i like hang-ons personally uh the aqua clear mini is a really good one because you can actually turn the flow down so if the beta isn't enjoying the amount of flow that's happening based on your aquascape and stuff you can turn down the flow and make it more comfy and still have a lot of media and uh, a small heater something with a thermostat um if it's preset that's fine as long as it's preset to 78 which it usually is 76 to 78 uh and has a thermostat to turn it on and off that's fine otherwise get something you can set to 76 to 78 and has a thermostat and that's perfect five gallon tanks are great size for a single beta sweet uh, next up, uh, for my freshwater aquarium, I'm wanting to add a charcoal filter to my Python connection coming from the sink. Ha ha! Would that eliminate the need for chlorine remover chemicals? Not necessarily. Ooh. And I'm going to kind of explain why I think this can be a dangerous practice. Can be. Um... Carbon is going to remove some chlorine and chloramine. It's one of the reasons we use it in tap water filters and stuff like that. Uh, however, you don't know how much chlorine or chloramine is in your tap water at any given time. You don't know when the last time your municipality has substantially increased, and it's usually for a period of time, but they can do it, increase the amount of chlorine, chloramine, and other chemicals that they put in the water at the treatment facility to kind of shock the system and make sure that the tap water is safe. So you don't know how long that carbon is actually gonna last. It could last a little while, it could last a long while. It's really hard to say. And the last thing you wanna be doing is blindly trusting it to last X period of time to make sure that the water in your aquarium or going into your aquarium is safe. So if we consider that a lot of people believe, and there is some, some um, proof in this, that carbon really only lasts in your aquarium and works well to remove whatever's in the water. It's a plethora of things it can remove for about a week. 
And after that, it's usually pretty saturated on, on a, an aquarium, right? So if it's only lasting a week, then you're changing that small portion of carbon, let's say um, in that 20 gallons of water, it's constantly consuming. But let's say to be safe, you were ch changing the carbon in that Python uh, every couple of uses, just to make sure, right? You're gonna go through more carbon than it would be financially feasible to, to continue to do. At that point, you might as well just keep using water conditioner. And water conditioner does a really, really good job, especially things like uh, Seachem Prime. It does a really, really good job uh, on a number of things, including temporarily kind of um, muting the effects of ammonia. So it's good to have on hand even in a pinch because if you have an ammonia spike and things are going crazy in your tank, just using some Seachem Prime is gonna help mitigate that while you correct the issue. So while you're doing water changes to pull it out, you know, it's a quick little fix, a temporary fix for your fish. So I don't think it's practical. Uh, is it possible? Sure, but I'd also wanna be using a, a chlorine and chloramine test kit every time I use that water coming out just to make sure that it's safe because I'd be paranoid that I'm gonna be flooding the tank with chlorine and chloramine. So I know it's been done, but I'm personally terrified of it because unless you're testing as the water goes through, you don't really know what's going on. Now, you may have answered part of this uh, in that answer uh, when I was uh, not listening. Sure. Uh, is there a product to remove chloramines from the water in a, an RODI system? Yes, so Aqua Effects, um, which I believe we carry Aqua Effects, uh, makes a specialized uh, media. It's a type of carbon block, I believe, called a chloramine blaster. Um, I don't know if we have them in stock. It's FX. Like, That's what I did, but I didn't call uh, FX. Oh, there we are. Yeah. There you go. NH, NH2CL blaster upgrade. That's our guy? Yes, that's right. it. So uh, this is a little add-on you can put because you don't want to just use car um, carbon. You want to use carbon and then I think the chloramine blaster after the fact or vice versa. Okay, so you'd actually be really, really well off to contact Aqua Effects directly about this. Their customer service is amazing and I've had this conversation with them a couple of times, but honestly, I can't remember. Um, but I think the issue is that chloramine destroys carbon so quickly or uh, uses it up so quickly that it is counterproductive to use um, carbon on an RODI system that is facing chloramine. Instead, they have this specialized version of carbon uh, called a chloramine blaster that lasts a lot longer when being pounded with chloramine. It's also more expensive as a result. However, it does a much better job, so it's still more cost effective than blowing through tons of carbon, uh, standard carbon cartridges. Um, but that's what you want to use. Uh, they do exist. You just got to look for them specifically because the standard carbon is not going to do a very good job. So hopefully that will fix your problem. Um, if I ever end up back on city water and I know the city uses chloramine, that is what I'm adding to my RDI system. Currently I'm on well water and the biggest pain in the butt I've got is just a colossal amount of iron. Thanks for nothing, Iron. But yeah. Cool. Um, so I want to say we have still like half the stream left. Smask it. It's, oh, yeah, because um, Drawer Full of Rock said, smask that like button. So make sure you <laughs> smask it. I love it. <laughs> I say if we can get to 100 likes before the end of the stream, we'll do a bunch of shout outs. And, and, and those people we shout out to will sub to their channel. 100 likes and we'll, we'll give you a shout outs. Yeah, that sounds just, awesome. Just for funsies. 100 likes, shout outs, channel subscriptions. I love it. Go for it. Uh, but it is time for everyone's favorite segment. Oh, it's my favorite segment. What did Brian learn this week? What did Brian learn? All right, so what did I learn this week? I uh, read um, uh, an article about the study that they've been doing about uh, 3D printed coral. Oh, cool. So uh, they, they've been doing this study um, where they have uh, an actual coral skeleton because okay. uh, they're, they're trying to uh, essentially find ways to um, maintain the health of reefs, even with, you know, the, the die off that's happening with climate Ocean change and all, all of that. Right? Yeah. yeah. So they're trying to f find ways to, to, to try and maintain the health as much as they can with that happening. So uh, they've been doing these studies in controlled settings where they have um, in one tank, they'll have like a coral skeleton and then they'll 3D print. Uh, the coral using like four different types of materials. They'll, they take like an iPhone and take like 50 pictures all around an actual coral and then use that to model the, 
the uh, the actual 3D print that they so have. So is this like a, a coral? Sorry to stop you. No, go ahead. Is this like they're 3D printing just the coral skeleton, or they're 3D printing the tissue? No, just the structure. Okay. Yeah, just the structure because they wanted to see. You know, will fish be uh, essentially afraid of this object? This, you know, oh, they, they want okay. to see yeah, yeah, will yeah. fish. How will fish respond to three D printed coral? Gotcha. So it's coral replicas. It's a that, yes. That's yes. right. Okay. Uh, it's not actually. It's, uh, and they want to see will coral also like actual coral actually attach to these and use it as sort of a base. To go I have a feeling this is going to go well. Okay. Well, so, yeah. So what they found in this study, they, I thought it was really funny. The the actual style of the study was called like a cafeteria style study because they put a bunch of things in front of the fish and say choose what you like. Oh, what do you prefer? Exactly. <laughs> So they have the, the coral skeleton in there, uh, and along with the actual 3D printed ones, and they want to see, well, are they, they, they're familiar with, with what a coral skeleton actually is, so maybe they'll just be more comfortable around that, because like, oh yeah, we, it, I mean, it's dead and that sucks, but we know, we know it, so <laughs> it, let's go It's there. the structure, it's true, the structure is important, because they, they go to the coral not just because it's alive, blah, 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 and there's food around it, but because it is their actual uh, kind of... Uh, protection from the elements. That's right, and that's and what they found in the study was that uh, the fish had no preference whatsoever. They, they were just as happy around three D printed coral of all kinds of materials, just as much as they were around this actual coral. And they they actually said what we find from this is fish just want protection. Yeah, they're not so. Uh, picky about what it is. So now the the idea is okay. This can work. Uh, they said like not just um. Uh, from climate change and acidification, but from storms that like level a reef. Yeah. Uh, they said that can be really hard on fish who like never leave more. They never swim more than 15 feet their whole life away from the where reef, they are. Yeah. So if they can go in there after a storm like wipes out a reef and put all this coral back in, it can keep those fish there and keep them alive and keep it healthy while it kind of rebuilds itself. Give them itself. a place to hide from predation, exactly. from elements. Yeah. So now they're 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 Love looking it. at that as an actual solution here, um, and it's like the cost of it is super cheap. Three, the cost of three D printing is, uh, depending on the mater materials you use, super cheap. Uh, so it's this really great low cost solution to help maintain the health. Uh, and now it's just sort of a matter of okay, what do we use to to print these with because you don't want to put more plastic in the ocean no, even. obviously so they're looking at you know like uh, ceramics maybe uh, they're looking at uh, there was like a cornstarch mixture that they could use that will nice. like uh, eventually dissolve like once the reef is actually built up and is a natural reef again the all the artificial reef will eventually sort of dissolve safely into the sea nice so yeah i thought that was i was reading that going that's pretty neat that's super S cool science to the rescue hopefully and you know keeping these uh, these reefs healthy and rebuilding them that was kind of cool so that's awesome do you know how indiscriminate fish are when it comes to finding a place to live they just want protection, man. Yeah, they will go into, uh, and you can see pictures of this and stuff online. Um, people actually use them for the whole like litter and plastic uh, thing, right? The, yeah. the campaign, which is important. But um, you can see them living in and around plastic bottles, glass. They don't care. Coconut shells. Uh, they All the flotsam in the ocean right now that is made up of plastic and garbage. The fish use that flotsam yeah. as places to breed and to live because the natural flotsam that would usually be there is uh, harder to come by. Um, usually it's things like giant uh, kelp from, I think it's in California and stuff, like when they eventually break off and float out to sea, yeah. create these natural uh, kind of um, safe havens for these uh, open ocean fish to use for breeding sure. and for those baby fish to to stay safe under so they don't care if we make it they will come yeah you know what it's really just i love that as long as they can't get eaten them. as long as they're not going to get eaten they're like i'm fine exactly yeah. they're like i will hide under that yeah <laughs> but if we can do it in a responsible way and you know like a, oh yeah a, and, and then mimic a, their natural exactly and the fact that it's you know fairly inexpensive compared to a lot of other other uh potential solutions that helps because you know everything's based on money of course. So, uh, yeah, so that, that was something I learned. I thought it was kind of neat. So I thought you guys would all like to hear that, too, in it case you awesome. hadn't read about it. Uh, awesome. But back to the questions, back to the whole reason we Aha! were here. I want to get started with plants. Is okay. 10 or 15-gallon tank okay to start with? Absolutely. The, 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 the plants truly don't care. Um, what really changes is the amount of space you have for plants and uh, the amount you're going to have to dose and, and so on and so forth. So, like, obviously it's going to be less expensive to start a 15-gallon uh, planted tank than it is to start a 55-gallon planted tank. So, yeah, go crazy. Like, I've, I've done 10-gallon vivariums. You know, I've done 20-gallon, uh, 20 20-long, 20 which was actually another tank size I really, really like. It's very similar to a 40 breeder in many ways. Um, so if you can afford a 20-long, maybe even go for a 20-long. They're, they're a lot of fun. But, yeah, 15 gallons, great planted tank. 
have a lot of fun. Get some like Anubias and Vals and stuff like that to start off with. Some, some easy like uh, fail proof plants, Java Fern, Java Moss. You're gonna have a ton of fun. Cool. Uh, good luck. Let us know how it goes. We really send like to, yeah, it in we, to the React series. That'll in. never end. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get back to that. Uh, so the accidental Aquarius says, "Am I seeing those ginormous rubber bands in the background?" You absolutely yes, you are. are. You thought we would throw those away? I was cleaning up the studio, getting it set up again today to go, and I found them. Went, yep, those gotta yep. go in the background. My linguini bands. Yes, those things are awesome. I they're, love those. They're things. like. <laughs> Oh. They pack a punch, too. If you saw me last week, Flint, they go they, fast. A wallop. Love them. Uh, okay, let's find a, another question. Uh, is it better to feed a black knife fish red worms or earthworms, <laughs> and can a fish choke on a worm? Thank you so much. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> I would say whatever is closer to their natural diet is probably the best. Um I don't think earthworms would necessarily be bad, if, but if you're talking like gigantic night crawlers, they might have a harder time. I would do something more like red wigglers, probably a decent option. Um, just, yeah, you just, you wanna make sure whatever you're feeding them is the, roughly the same size and shape uh, as what they would naturally be feeding on. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't know exactly what uh, the black knives feed on in the wild. So I can't give you a direct recommendation on that. Also, just make sure wherever you're getting these worms from, they aren't exposed to pesticides or fertilizers or anything else that you wouldn't actually want in your aquarium. So you wanna make sure that you're either culturing them responsibly yourself, which is easy to do and I recommend it, um, or uh, just get them from a reliable source. Yeah, cool. that's, that's your options basically. If you're gonna dig them up from outside, you better live in the country where, where nobody sprays anything ever. Cool. I think we're about at 50 likes right now, 49 or 50. So we have about 49. Oh, yeah, we got like 15 minutes left, guys. You better start hitting that like button. Do you remember? And we'll, we'll do some shout outs and sub to your channel. Remember during the last live stream? Yeah. You were like, we'll do it when we'll you hit 200. Yeah. Yeah. That's a long way away. Everyone's like, click. And yeah. Yeah, there it took we go. two seconds because I had faith in you guys. Yeah, yeah. You guys rocked it. <laughs> uh, is it okay to, have a, to put a ballast shark in a 55 gallon? Ah. Uh, I'm going to bet there are a lot of people that probably think not. Um, cause they get a, honestly get a pretty decent size, but as long as there isn't a ton of other fish in the tank and it's got most of that tank to itself, it's going to, if, especially if you get it small, it's going to be able to live in that tank for a very long time before you're going to need to upgrade, but you probably will at some point want to upgrade to something like a 125. Like they're not a small fish and they, they do prefer some space. So not its whole life. But I could understand if somebody was like, well, this is the tank I have room for for now, and this is the tank I'm gonna use for now, and yeah. It, it'll live a while in that tank quite comfortably, and then it's gonna hit that point that we talked about many, many yeah. streams and stuff where stunting is gonna start happening, and you don't want that, so you're gonna need to upgrade. But, Just take care of it. Yeah, ultimately, I would say a ballast shark is probably better off in a 125. Cool. Uh, my aquarium is very dirty. I'm cleaning it every week. Is there any solution? Mm -hmm. Not a lot of context, but let's say your, your tank is always, always dirty, even though you're doing like cleaning, let's say you're doing Okay, let's changes. look at the symptoms of this. Why is your tank really, really dirty? Because if your tank's really, really dirty, there's a reason. And uh, if you're trying to minimize how much work you're doing on your tank, you're gonna have to figure out what the reason for the dirty, dirty, dirty tank is. Uh, I'm gonna list some things, and you can decide for yourself whether or not any of these things could be the problem. The tank's being under filtered. So your tank is, uh, you know, whatever size, you've got whatever fish in it, and the filter you have on that tank isn't keeping up with the livestock in that aquarium. So upgrading your filter could be uh, one way that you're gonna help solve that issue. Two, overfeeding. Maybe you just love your fish so much that you have a hard time not feeding them three times a day, even though they probably don't actually need it. Therefore, you are getting a lot of waste in the system. Um, and that is causing issues uh, like algae growth and just general dirtiness, um, causing you to need to do more maintenance. Another issue could be you don't really do gravel cleanings when you do water changes and you're just changing a small amount of the water and not actually removing the mulm and built up waste under the gravel. Again, just simply adding a gravel cleaner to your repertoire of items that you use for maintenance and using that every time you do a water change, that could fix the problem if you're not already doing that. 
uh, it, the list goes on and on and on. So there's lots of things that can, you could just be leaving your light on too long and getting a lot of algae growth and that's your version of a dirty tank, right? You've got a lot of algae. You could be way overstocked and you need to cut back on the amount of fish you have. So once you determine or, or start to determine where your failing point is that's causing your tank to stay dirty or causing you not to be able to keep up with it uh, within reason, uh, you can kind of start to find a remedy for it. So look at those things, do some water tests, find out if it's your nitrates that are super high, your ammonia, if it's in a reasonable spot. Um, see if you can determine whether or not you have a lot of phosphate or silicate in the system. There are test kits for those as well. And then drill down to what it is that's causing your tank to be dirty all the time. Because it's not a mystery, there's definitely something doing it. It's just a matter of figuring it out and then uh, kind of solving that one issue so that you can stop doing as much maintenance as you, as you are because obviously we don't want to be just doing work on the tanks all the time. Right. Some of us do, but those are weird people <laughs> with nothing better to do with their lives. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm one of those people a lot of the time. So anyways, but uh, yeah, you just, you, we want to enjoy our tanks and not be doing constant maintenance on them. So finding the harmony is important. So figure out where the weak point is and, and work from there. Right on. I have a seven gallon tank. Can I turn it that into a saltwater aquarium or should I do a 15 gallon and what can I put in it for uh, stock? In 2006 or 2007, one of the nicest uh, nano reefs I ever saw was done in a seven gallon mini bow. And not only was it a nice little reef tank with some soft corals, but it had SPS corals as well. For those of you who are not um, privy, those are small polyp stony corals, and they are often regarded as the hardest corals to keep aside from non-photosynthetic corals, which can be much more difficult for a myriad of reasons. But um, this small nano reef had an absolutely amazing array of corals. And I will tell you right now, I have even seen smaller Pico reefs sub two and a half gallons that have done incredibly well. Now I will preface all of this by saying these people who are keeping these aquariums have a solid understanding of what it is to keep a reef aquarium and to keep those corals happy and healthy. They are extremely demanding aquariums because of their size. They're a lot easier to um, mess up. They're a lot easier to overdose on. They're a lot easier to overfeed. It is a lot more difficult to keep that small volume of water um, basically healthy and like we talked about earlier in the stream, consistent and stable for those corals. So can you do it? Absolutely you can. Uh, I would highly recommend that if this is a newer uh, venture for you, you haven't really done a lot of reefing before, stick to simple, easy, soft corals. Things like zoanthids, palithoas, leather corals, mushroom corals. Don't go blowing a ton of money on really expensive morphs to start out. Just get things that look nice and are affordable. Don't get caught up in the hype of, well, this corals, you know, this one polyp is $150 because it's called the bleached kraken from space coral. It doesn't matter. Okay, names are just names. People get other people really hyped up about coral. It's really important to start. Um, you know, just at ground ground level. Don't go crazy. Start at ground level. You will get the hang of it. And uh, starting with very forgiving corals at the beginning is going to be an asset. Um, and you'll, you'll, like I said, over time get used to it and you can start adding slightly more demanding corals. Maybe you want to get into LPS corals like Acanthastria or Torch corals or the myriad of Euphelia, whatever it is. And then maybe SPS from there on if you are so inclined. But yeah, possible, difficult, especially for a beginner. If you have a lot of experience and you've been doing reefs and you're just like, maybe I could do a seven gallon, definitely doable. Just be prepared for the challenge, <laughs> which is not French for challenge, I'm sure. But I tried to make it sound yeah, that way. I'm going to look it up now. Uh, <laughs> why does my water get cloudy when I feed the fish or add fertilizer? It just started happening recently. So they're feeding the fish or they're adding fertilizer and the water goes poof, cloudy. Why? Uh, it could be a bacterial bloom. It's hard for me to say without more context. You're, you could be uh, at this really odd tipping point with the aquarium where you're basically overstocked to the point where any small increase in uh, nutrient in the system is causing bacterial blooms. You could be facing um, bacterial blooms because you're right at the end of a, your, your cycle, your initial cycle. I know that's not probably what's happening because you've said this tank's been up for a bit, but you know, you could be just tipping the end of that uh, cycle over and over. 
Um, so the bacteria just goes through a little bloom every time there's that nutrient spike. Really hard to say. It doesn't happen often. Not many people report this kind of an issue. Um, and I really don't have a good solution for it other than it usually goes away on its own um, unless it is an overstocking issue, in which case you, you just have to stay on top of water changes and try to reduce the amount of nutrient in the system so that every time you put more nutrient in, you're not, you know, like pushing the, the um, workload of that beneficial bacteria in the filter. That's all I've got. Cool. What's the best liquid fertilizer in your opinion? Oh, it's hard to say because there are so many good ones and many brands I haven't tried that other people really, really love. So here's the thing. I'm going to be honest and I'm going to tell you, I don't necessarily think there's any one best brand of anything. I think there are a lot of companies that have good philosophies that care about their products and want to provide a really good product to aquarists. Uh, a lot of people understand that fish tanks are actually pets and it's important that we treat uh, this industry with a lot of uh, love and respect and with the understanding that any product that comes out affects the animals and our pets directly. So with that said, uh, one of my favorite um, fertilizers that I've used for a very, very long time is Seachem Flourish. It's a very, uh, you know, easy to use, all-in-one fertilizer. Um, I like uh, the balance of nutrients that are in there. I haven't had issues with algae with this fertilizer. Uh, I find it has worked very well for me. It's what I've been using on the low-tech tank. It's what I was going to also be using on the high-tech tank. It is my go-to fertilizer. I really like Seachem. I've, I've spent a lot of time talking with Seachem reps, talking with um, the head of the company over there. Um, I've gone through uh what they they called like seachem i forget what the name of it was but it was like a seachem school where you kind of go and they t tell you all about all of their products mm -hmm. um how each product is made how it's broken down uh you know every little thing that's in it and why they've done it that way and i really like their mindset and how they go about it but again a lot of people really like tropica fertilizer which i have used in the past and i have used it um, back uh, with their original formula. I've used it with their newer formula. I think it's split into two, like there's an orange bottle and a green bottle now. I like that as well. I just, you know, find it easier to use um, the Seachem. Um, you know, there's gonna be ADA fertilizers and soils and all kinds of stuff out there. There's gonna be powdered stuff, liquid stuff, Kent, I'm sure, Brightwell, there's all kinds of stuff. I'm not saying any of the other brands aren't good. I'm just saying what I've got experience with and what I like, but I am positive there's more than one best brand out there. It really comes down to your aquarium keeping, what you're keeping, and uh, you know what you have access to. Cool. Uh, I hate the idea of saying that there's only one. Right. Well, thing. I mean, yeah. I've used so many. I've like, I'm gonna go on a little side side mission here. I've used so many different products and make a point to use things that Big Al's doesn't even carry, just so I know what's going on across the board. Lighting companies um, from lower end to higher end, pumps from lower end to higher end. Uh, just everything. I love playing with the technology in this industry because I know that there isn't one best thing. There is a plethora of different ways to do something and there is a plethora of different products out there and a lot of them are really, really good. So I don't prescribe to there's a best anything. Anyways. Fair enough. Uh, we're at 81 likes and we only have five minutes left. It's a hard out today at one o'clock. So we got yep. five minutes left. Hit that like button. We'll do some shout outs. Uh, another question, fluval soil or ADA soil? Uh, which one would you say is the better soil? Fluval soil or ADA soil? Um, I haven't got a ton of experience with Fluval, but if I was going to pick between the two, I'd probably go ADA because I haven't used it yet and I'm really curious about it. And I know a lot of professional aquascapers love the stuff. Cool. Uh, next up, what are good plans for a beginner and what size tank? Should we have a video for that. I'm gonna link the video link, for you guys. Yeah, yeah, link the video. I'll quickly run over what's in the video though. Uh, Anubius. Um, so Anubius Nana, whether it's Nana regular or petite, uh, jungle vowels, uh, Java moss, Java fern, and cryptocorns. Okay, cool. Uh, how to produce algae, algae in indoor tanks? How to produce? Leave the light on too long. Don't do water changes as often and allow the, the algae to act as your nutrient sink. Um, put your tank near a window. That's what I've done to get my green water. Works extremely, the sun works very well at growing green water. Holy moly. Yes, that's cool. it. It's very, very much just, you know, neglect the tank a little bit and it's going to happen. Just make sure you don't end up with super high nitrates at the beginning. You want, if you're culturing algae on purpose in your tank, um, 
you want to leave the light on too long and you know do a little bit less maintenance but enough maintenance that your nitrates are always at an appropriate level for your fish you don't want to make them uncomfortable cool uh let's see here uh, a lot of repeats a lot of repeats that's from earlier though so i'm not doing that anymore uh, holy fish world vlog yeah calm down let's see calm here. down with the with the repeats uh let's see use diy water column for its dosing soil lost its nutrients eventually in bottled all in one is expensive okay i don't know if that's a question though. i think that's just someone answering dr ted yeah. yeah this is what i mean i love that you guys help each other out in the chat too i love that uh, i watch your videos all the time i have three 10 gallons one planted two with gravel cleaning them was hell but watching your videos uh uh, thought, uh, taught them about the python so easy thank you oh cool oh yeah python's really really easy a little a little on the wasteful side um if you're uh you know water's expensive in your area water's never expensive but um really really convenient uh this one's a, a toughie i mean like a sad one help new aquarium owner here all my fish have died aye, aye, aye. neon tetras glow light tetras and zebra danios all dead water has been tested and is fine what did i do wrong what should i do now that's a that's a tough one that's man. a so very hard question yeah, really to answer now look that, there's a number of things that could go wrong where water is testing technically fine you could have had a temperature fluctuation a large swing in temperature puts fish into shock and they will die from it uh, if you take a fish that's in relatively cool water and drop it into relatively warm water, they will often just do cartwheels real fast and then die. It's a massive shock to their nervous system. It's not good. Um, another thing that could happen is if you had perfume or soap or anything like that on your hands, or if there's somebody in your house, if you have kids, for instance, and they're playing with liquids, um, dish soap, playing with anything, and they put something like that in the tank, it could be bleach even. Like, I don't know what's happening. Um, that could wipe out your tank. Uh, when you say it tests fine, we need to know what that tests fine is. Like, did you test ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, like the whole gamut, or did you just test one thing? Is it just ammonia you looked at? Um, yeah, this it's a really tough situation. I'm really sorry you had to go through that. It really, really sucks to watch your pets suffer in yeah. any way, shape, or form. So my heart goes out to you, but... Um, it is really important to try to figure out what happened, but I would look at making sure that there was nothing in the water, nothing on your hands that could have potentially gone in, perfumed hand hand sanitizer or um, uh, hand lotion. Huge, huge issue. People have wiped their tank out with that before. Um, and then, yeah, just making sure that if, if you do have kids in the home or uh, unruly anyone, teenagers, I don't know, and they're dumping anything stupid into the aquarium, um, you know, you just, you got to make sure that they can't get to it. Uh, like for, for instance, with the 265 mega build, when we did that, I put locks on the doors, invisible, like they're invisible magnet locks. You have to use a magnet to trip the lock so you can open the door up because I knew my kids would try to go in there and either try to drown themselves. It was just Joey at the time, I think, but yeah. either drown themselves, uh, drown themselves or, you know, throw toys or kids look for ways, to, kids or, look for ways to either get hurt or do damage. Yeah. That's like their main thing. How can I hurt myself and what can I break? Yeah. Right now, my son is throwing literally everything he finds down the stairs. Yeah. Like he can't get to the stairs, but he will chuck it over the railing and just hear it crash at the bottom. Yeah, I don't know how many things he's broken at this point, but yeah. It's so, a job. Like it's like he's being paid yeah, to, do to destroy stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm really sorry to hear that. Hopefully that helps get you in the right ballpark. And uh, I hope you have some more luck next time. It's it's definitely okay to start fresh, like drain the tank, rinse everything really well, fill it back up and start from square one and try again. If you think there was something potentially in the water or in the tank that caused this issue, that's unnatural, like a chemical. Cool. Well, uh, it's, it's one o'clock. Uh, well, it's actually noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we are at a racetrack, uh, unfortunately, for today. Um, but... But we had fun. We'd have fun. We didn't make it to 100 likes. We made it you to know like what? 91. So let's let's do some honorable mentions. Okay. Honorable, uh, honorable mentions. mentions. Number one honorable mention here in the chat. Zane Niaz? Niaz? Zane Niaz uh, has been just going crazy in the chat. 
says, I love your channel. I've been watching for years now. I love you guys so much. I got my first tank two years oh, ago. Awesome. Thanks to you guys. I really appreciate you guys, whether you see this or not. Well, we saw it. Same. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming and watching our videos. It does mean a lot to us that you're here and participating. So thank you for that, I Zane. Um, yeah, uh, subscribe to your channel. Um, so uh, thank you for all you've done. And uh, hopefully we'll see some vids come up from you. And you, we're going to get notified now. So hopefully we'll see some stuff from you too. 1 a.m. Zane Holy. 1 a.m. Well, you're, you're a trooper. You're awesome. You're we love trooper. you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, awesome. love you too. Awesome. Uh, who else? The Accidental Aquarist is always here. We will love that guy. Drawer full of rocks. Uh, always hangs out with these guys. So thank you for that. Drawer full of rocks. Who else? Henshaw. He's been really busy in the chat. Awesome. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sub to all you guys. As soon as this is over, I'm going to go sub to all you guys. Uh, who else have we got here? Um, Kyle Hosty. He's hanging out in the chat. Uh, uh, Aquatic Ness. I think I've seen you around before. So uh, welcome back. Thank you so much. Gao Gao. Uh, we didn't get to your question, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully next time. Uh, remember, guys, get to the get to these things as soon as possible. Get your questions. I have chat. no idea when Ecotech's releasing that. They're really tight-lipped. <laughs> there you go. We got to it. Uh, who else? Who else? Who's been really uh, busy here? Thomas, you should get what? Scroll down. You should get ripped. Oh, so, like so, <laughs> both. Because <laughs> I'll tell you, it'd be a lot easier. I just here, quick. I used to work out a lot for two years. I went from 129 pounds, disgusting, I know, um, up to 152. Uh, I literally ate 7,000 calories a day, worked out four days a week, and that's all I could accomplish. I had less than 1% body fat, and that's just because that's how my body works. So I can't live my life in the gym. I don't have time for that, although I do really like uh, the suggestion, and um, thank you for worrying about my body image. <laughs> <laughs> so, someone mentioned that we should uh, oh Mike kicks in I don't always comment but I'm always here thank yeah, you, you Mike are. we appreciate yeah, yeah. that uh, someone meant, someone asked if it's every Saturday it's not every Saturday it's every other Saturday uh, we did one last Saturday because it was our special live giveaway yep. uh, we wanted to do but if you want to know the schedule for when we're doing these it is every other Saturday I just linked that in the chat so check out our schedule show up on those days at 11 subscribe if you haven't subscribed to us subscribe yes. hit, that, hit, hit the little notification watch yep. our vids um, so that's how you guys are going to know when we're actually uh, doing our streams um so thank you guys so much for all of that uh what else what else what else that's about it on our end uh we love you guys we want you guys to uh keep on tanking with us we want you guys to uh check out our new pokemon inspired build it's honestly this is going to be the craziest thing i've ever done in terms of an aquarium build like absolutely nuts i i, I don't want to like oversell this but it's going to make the tank series look like garbage do you remember Tank to that show that probably doesn't exist anymore because I think they all had a problem? Right. Yeah, it's gonna make that show look like crap. I so. don't want I don't want to be hyperbolic here, but it's gonna be the best aquarium ever. So tune in. <laughs> just undo all your work. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. I. I am so. I. I don't even know what to say. That's how crazy this is gonna be. Jorful Rock says Pokemon is coming. Thomas Mon, Brian Mon. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Yeah, Sword and Shield is coming out November fifteenth. I've already pre-ordered it. I've already both of them. Um, I've pre-ordered the new uh, Switch Lite for my wife because we only have one Switch in the house and we both want to play because we are gamers. We're geeks. That's what we do. We love it. Uh, Susan Staples says, I miss your suits from last week. I kind of miss our suits too. I like that little t-shirt that I had. I might wear that more often just to make these You should, fancy. you should. And thank you. I, I appreciate that. I don't get dressed up too often. Almost never actually. Yeah. So. Yeah. I really have the opportunity. So that our little gal was great. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Um, just uh, like we said, subscribe. Make sure you show up. Uh, check out our schedule so you know when to show up for these. Check out our huge library of past videos. We have a, if you ever have any questions. Hundreds. We have hundreds of videos <laughs> on all, like a lot of the questions we get. Uh, on these chats, you can usually be answered uh, with a lot of our videos we've made over the years. So oh, check yeah. those out if you haven't already. Share our channel because the bigger we get, the better stuff we can do. <laughs> I put in, oh, I put in, we're going to get our silver play button in a couple weeks. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about yeah. that. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, yeah. That's in my it. defense, I, gotta... I watched a lot of tanks back in the day. Yeah. But that's it. No, yeah. I think we're going to do better than them. So yes, I was throwing shade. <laughs> yeah, I see you, Donna. Stop me. <laughs> yeah. And right. anyways, keep on tanking, guys. Yeah, yeah. Later, guys. Take it easy.